Good morning, one and all. I've got Douglas with me today. He's going to be uh, being my yoga assistant. Um, so another little live video for you. Um, going to um, yeah, just have a bit of a move around. It's seven a.m. Uh, that seems like a good time to try and get ourselves moving. Uh, probably going to be about. 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, again, something you can do now or later on. Um, I should just say I am in the process of setting up a Patreon account, which will be a way in which you can join videos. I'm gonna do some um, varying lengths of videos. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and there'll be different kind of benefits you can get from different tiers. Um, so if you can't afford much, there'll be something for you. If you can afford more, then um, obviously in this time, it would be lovely. Because this thing, this thing, this thing, eats a lot of fucking food. <laughs> and likes to have a wrestle. So, um, yeah, uh, by all means, please, please, once I've got it all sorted, um, I'll put the link up and he can see himself. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, uh, you can then hopefully come and join me on there and there'll be regular videos weekly. Um, and there'll be more videos than some, uh, less videos for others, whatever you can afford. Uh, so, I'm going to get on my mat and I'm going to be harassed by this monster the whole time. Um, <laughs> this is how big he's got now, look. how big he's got. He's big as me. As big as me. Oh, if you get. Oh, yeah. Cool. Nice, nice. So, let's just start ourselves seated. Same as last night, in whatever position feels most comfortable for you. Probably not a great day on your neck, but you know, that might be what you've got today. Might not be a great day, it might be a child. I'm just going to try to show that even with an annoying penis of a dog you can uh, still get some kind of practice in. So, allow yourself just to sit down or lie down, that might be a nice place for you to do. And then just close the eyes and just move into the back of the breath. Or move the back, the breath into the back of the nose. Begin to breathe in for four and out for six. Again, same as last night, same as any class of mine. If four and six is an uncomfortable too long, too short breath, then make it longer or shorter. Three and five, just try to lengthen your exhale. Again, to keep your focus on that breath. Drawing in for four and out for six. Try to feel as if this part of the ribs, which is expanding, you should feel like the belly expands too. But the idea is that it's not just the belly going up and down, it's not just the chest, it's the whole of the rib cage expanding and contracting. And if we breathe through our nose, our nose is connected to our diaphragm muscles, it helps to draw it down, open it up. Just another three breaths. Keep trying to grow tall through the crown of the head. Sit bones rounding. Just try to let the tension through your cheeks, your jaw, your belly and your shoulders all just dissolve with each and every exhale. Final breath. So just starting with a simple little breath hold. We're just going to inhale in, a mouthful of dog head, and exhale out. Then we're going to hold our nose. We're going to count down from 10, 9. Try to relax around it, nothing in the lungs, just holding that exhale. Two, one, inhale in through the nose softly, quietly. 
exhale softly, quietly. Just take two normal slow breaths. And so we're just trying to play with recalibrating our brain, the chemo receptors in our brain to tolerate a higher level of CO2. So we inhale, we exhale, we hold the nose, we hold for 12, 11. becomes too stressful, you feel like there's a strong air hunger, then don't be silly, drop it down to where you feel comfortable. Over time, over practice, this will begin to creep back up to a more higher level. Again, we go breathe in, breathe out, close the nose, hold the breath for 14. seconds. If it's too stressful at 20, stick to 14, 16, 18, whatever it might be. Next round will be 16 seconds. Inhaling in. Exhaling out. Close the nostrils, hold the breath. 60. Inhale in. At the end of that, the inhale should be really soft and quiet and gentle. It shouldn't have to be a tight breath. It should just be a really as if the lungs are just expanding with that negative pressure as the nasal cavity opens. And so we go again. You might begin to find that your nose runs a little bit at this point as the uh, oh, nose, the nasal cavities open up. So inhale, exhale, hold the breath for 18. Inhaling in. Just got one more round to go again, stick to 16, 14. 12, 10, whatever works best for you as we move towards 20 seconds. Hopefully we want to all be able to get to 25 seconds at the least. Ideally, eventually we want to get to about 40 seconds. Especially if any of you are athlete -y type people, you should be able to do this in 40 seconds. No worries. If you can't, come see me. So again, we'll inhale in. We'll exhale out. Close the nostrils, hold the breath for 20. Releasing, taking that breath in. Taking the breath out. Inhale, draw the arms up over your head, interlink the fingers, turn and push them up towards the sky. Keep your chin looking forward, your eyes on the horizon, drop the foot, the hands down, out in front of you, trying to round your back, trying to fearlessly drop down on towards the fleshy bit of your bum away from the sit bones. Inhale, sit the arms back tall again. Exhale, pull the elbows down through the cactus arms. Left arm reaches towards the right knee, right hand behind the back. Sit nice and tall and rotate through. Again, keep trying to use that back hand just to sit tall again. Chin towards the chest, long through the spine. You should feel as if the sternum lifts. 
exhale, come back through to centre, switch sides, right hand to uh, left knee, uh, left hand behind the back, sit tall. For those of you who don't practice me regularly, you will suddenly realise I had a terrible uh, understanding of left versus right. <laughs> sit tall, rotate. Try to find a bit of push and pull between knee and elbow, between knee and uh, uh, hand even. And then slowly come back through. Inhale, draw the arms back up. Exhale, pull them down through prayer, down towards the floor, roll over your hands and knees, however feels most comfortable to you. And then we'll just begin to roll ourselves around. Begin to pad and pull those wrists out. We're gonna get ourselves started as we get moving, warming ourselves up. I've just decided I'm gonna slightly change how I do my mat situation. See, I'm new to this. I'm just gonna add one more mat. Just so I can demonstrate from different angles for you guys. So, from here, you'll still straight on your mat, just so you can see we're in our cat-cow position. Just begin to roll yourself around. Imagine you're in that little nutshell. You can't get out. There's that classic Austin Powers line. I use this joke in my class. Makes me laugh anyway. Is, oh, Austin, that's you in a nutshell. No, this is me in a nutshell. Oh, I can't get out. There you go. So, make me laugh. So here you are in your nutshell, just exploring upper left side, right side, lower side. Push through the shoulder blades, feel that protraction, feel those shoulder blades lift up, and then drop them down. Keep the shot elbow straight. Roll them out a little bit. We're gonna tuck toes under. We're gonna push into hands. We're gonna lift the knees. We're gonna hover just for five, four, Three, two, one. Lift the right foot. Five, four, three, two, one. Place that down. Lift the left foot. Five, four, three. Keep pushing through the upper back. Two, one. Place it down. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Knees to the floor. Give the wrists a little roll and a shake out. Give the knuckles a little crack, maybe if they feel like that would be a benefit. And then we're gonna keep warming up in towards our core, our midsection a little bit. Hands are gonna come down beside our thighs. So not back here, not out here. You wanna try and get them down here. If you need to find a couple of books or something, that might be a benefit. See how you go, but we're gonna do three rounds. We're going to try and round our spine, push up, push down into the floor. And notice we're on our toenails. We're going to inhale and just push and lift. So it's uncomfortable on our feet, but really, if we're pushing, really it's, uh, find that push through the hands and the arms, it shouldn't be that much weight on our feet. We really try to pull our pelvic floor up. Then we get here for three, two, one. Come down. We're going to do that again. Two more times, but each time we're going to try and lift a foot and like walk it a little bit. So again, drop the ribs, tuck your tailbone, hands to the floor, inhale, push and lift and squeeze, 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 lift the left foot, three, two, one, place it down, lift the right foot, three, two, one, place it down, come down, sit tall, still with nose breathing right. Nose is our filter. Great way to uh, clean the air before we breathe it in. Final time with this little lalasana preparation. Pushing down, push, uh, feeling that back widen, lengthen. Rise up tall for five, four, three, two, one. Lift left foot, five, four, three, two, one. Lift right foot, five, Four, three, two, one. Hold both knees up. Three, two, one. Coming down. Walk those hands forward out in front. We'll just move some weight through them again. Maybe just try to turn them to face palms, face up. 
that might be a nice place to be. Roll them around a little bit. And then we'll find hands down to the floor. Feet can step back, find our plank pose. Hold here for a few moments. Explore around. Remember if plank for you is a knee, the low plank on your knees, and that's perfect. Do that too. I said this last night, I said it in my classes, I can't highlight it enough. If this is your version of a uh, push-up, so I'm going to show you this while you guys are just rolling your wrist around. If this is your version, that's not what we're looking for. I'd far prefer if you can set yourself there and just bend your arms this much and then push up from there. Retrain your nervous system to feel safe and comfortable just doing that. Lovely. So we're in our plank. We're just going to try to lower as low as we feel comfortable and then push back tall. Roll into your downward facing dog. We pedal ourselves around. We're going to get ourselves going, especially if Darth chases his tail. You're a bright boy, aren't you, mate? So from here, we're going to take those little hop and steps and walks, however you want to get there, to the front of your mat. We're going to roll our chest all the way up to stand, rising up, interlink the fingers, push your chest up, squeeze your bum cheeks on a little bit, exhale, swan dive back down over your mat, down towards the thighs, and then inhale, rise to your version of a flat back. Try to feel as if your chin is lifting in towards your chest, you're lengthening through the back of the neck, you're trying to lift the rib cage up. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Step yourself back to plank pose. Here we go through our variations of vinyasas. We're going to come down through a push up, push back tall. And remember, that's just as low as you need to go. Come back towards knees, chest, uh, child pose. Roll yourself forward. Keep the elbows hugging in if you can. Be broad across your collarbones. Touch your chest to the floor, knees, chest, and chin. Here's the fun part, and push backwards, not upwards. That's a challenge for the triceps, always. Lift the hips up, tuck your tailbone under you, roll into your high plank. From here, keep the arms straight, just lower your pelvis. Maybe you need to drop your knees or not. Lower your pelvis down, try to roll shoulder blades back and down your back body. And then exhale, here's the fun part, bend the elbows, low plank, relax down to the floor. Push yourself back into child's pose, lift up to down dog. Again, find your way, can you keep your legs and arms straight, tiny little steps, forward, 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 forward. We find our way to the front, we rise to a flat back, so again, maybe you even bend your knees a little bit to allow the chest to lift. The spine to be long, the chin to push down, exhale, down towards the floor, inhale, rise the arms up, interlink the fingers, push them tall. We're going to find a little side bend towards the right. Again, try to open this side. Not only are we just bending, this left arm is reaching so far up. If you watch my body, as I reach up, the whole body bends before I even then laterally flex. So we laterally flex right, inhale up, come back to centre, reach that right hand up, you'll feel the chest spin, and then you can begin to side bend over a little bit more. And if Douglas wants to join in with the side bends too, yes, and then we'll release, swan dive back down over our legs, rise to your flat back. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back to plank, good, down dog by Douglas. Come down through your chaturanga, so drop to your knees if you need to, or don't. Come back up, drop to the knees, child's pose. This is going to be interesting, we've dug in my way. We're going to dive forward into a knees, chest and chin, ashtangarasana. And then we're going to push backwards, elbows stay in by your sides. Yes, sister, yes, yes. And then we're going to push our way up in towards our down dog. See, even with an annoying child, you can still get your practice in. Bend your knees, lift the bum up, tuck your tailbone. Oh, roll forward into your high plank. 
At this point, we try to lower the pelvis, maybe the knees down. Ow. 60 kilos of dog wrestling you. It's a good resistance training too. From here, the fun part, we lift the plank, bend the elbows. This time we're going to try and hover a low plank as low as possible. Hold here just for five, four, three, two, one. Push back tall. Come back to child's pose. Yes. And then we're going to push up into our Adha Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog. Wrestling your great day while you're at it. That sounds euphemism maybe, I don't know. And then from here, we're gonna walk our way forward again, up to the front of our mat. And once we're there, we rise to a flat back. Exhale, folding back down over our legs. Inhale, roll yourself up to stand. Draw your arms up. Apparently that's a sign for Douglas to come and join me. He likes to get tall. Yes. Yes. And then we'll fold our way back down over our legs. Inhale, rise the flat back. And then fold yourself back forward down over your legs. Final time through this before we find some different movements coming on. We're down into our plank. Use your knees or not. Come down, chaturanga. Inhale, push back up. Drop back towards your knees, child's pose. And then roll onto knees, chest and chin. So we're just here, bum is still in the sky. Ski slope spine, looking forward. And then we're gonna push backwards again in towards our child's pose. Lift your weight up into your high plank. Yeah, sorry, into your down dog. From here, we are gonna roll our spine through to high plank. From there, we're going to drop our pelvis down. Seriously, if you think children are annoying, they've got nothing on Doug. Doug's like a child, but he weighs more than my wife does. And then from the low plank, just bend the elbows, hover down here. This time, a bit harder for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, push tall, roll back, lift your right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog, bend your knee, try to kick your bum cheek, open your leg, imagine you're this idiot boy dog, peeing on a fence, now you're going to step that foot back behind you somewhere, this is more challenging because hopefully what I want to do is sit down. So now Douglas is out of the way. We should now be sitting towards the back. Makes your life a little bit tricky seeing, but I'll talk you through it. So your right knee is up towards the sky, right foot in towards your bum, left leg out in front. A variation of our Matsi and Drafts, our out half Lord of the Fish pose. So from here, right hand behind the back, left hand around your right leg, twist towards the back. Turn your right foot out towards the right side of your mat. Turn your left foot to the inside blade. Lift yourself up for a variation of side plank. Left arm comes over the head. Try to feel as if you can wrap your right shoulder blade down on towards your back. And then sink your bum back down towards the floor. Left hand comes down towards the floor behind you again. Turn your left foot onto the inside, onto the outside edge. Lift the hips up for the, uh, uh, side, what's this called? <laughs> Anyone help? Uh, come across now, our flip dog wild thing. And then pick your right foot up. We're gonna step right foot towards the front. Maybe you need to put your right hand down. See if maybe you cannot bring the right hand back behind you for balance as you step the right foot forward. Inhale, sweep the arms up and just step your back foot in a little bit closer. Beautiful. From here, you just move back so I can stay in Cameron's eyes. And then we're going to bring the hands down back behind us. Lean belly to thighs. Keep your right knee nice and bent. And just pick your left foot really up off the floor. Bent leg warrior three. 
Bring the arms out in front, pull that left knee in and stand yourself tall, straightening your left leg out. So arms are up, legs long, sweep yourself back again, warrior three straight leg variation this time. Step the left foot back, turn it towards the left, we're into warrior two, sink your chest, your hips, your body down. If you can, try and find head over heart over hips. Don't worry about that old school alignment thing of he uh, heel in line with arch. See what works best for your hips. Explore. Just try and keep gently nudging that knee out to the sides, not because your knee will explode, but you'll end up just loading a little bit more tissue through the inside of the leg. Forearm down, left arm up over the head. Reach, 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 reach. Exhale, sweep the hands down. Turn yourself. So both feet are facing towards the, the left. And now we're in our wide leg forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you might need to to keep your back relatively straight, folding forward over the legs. Inhale, rise to a flat back. Look forward, straighten the legs you do. Exhale, folding back down. One more time, rising up. Exhale, folding back down. Again, the knees can soften as much as they need to. Sway yourself around at this point. Just give everything a bit of space. And then inhale, roll yourself back up. Come all the way to stand. Turn your right foot back towards the front. Cartwheel the hands back down to the floor. Push, lift the right foot up. Open that hip again, like that boy dog peeing on a fence. And then just place it back down next to the left foot. Pedal yourself around. See if you can lift your left hand off the floor and still feel pretty comfortable here. Shouldn't feel like there's too much having to shift around. See if you can tap somewhere along the outside of your right leg. Left hand to the floor, switch sides. Again, there should be very little uh, mass movement because hopefully we should be pretty balanced between those three points. Left leg lifts towards the sky, bend that knee, try to kick your right bum cheek, open that hip, boy dog ping on a fence pose. And then again, we're going to look under that right arm, spot that left foot, bring it down to the floor, come across the half. Uh, wild thing, flip dog pose. Squeeze bum cheeks on, then sit your bum down to the floor. Right leg should be only facing the back of the mat. Left knee should be up towards the sky with your left foot by your bum cheek. Left hand behind the back. Right hand wraps around, right arm wraps around your left leg. Pull your right toes up, twist towards the left. Good opportunity to relax your breathing again. Come back to the nostrils, left hand down to the floor, turn both feet to face towards the left. So the left foot will be flat on the floor, the right foot you're going to come onto the inside edge, lift the hips up, squeeze your bum cheeks on, you could maybe lift up onto the ball of the left foot, and then slowly come back down. We switch it right hand down to the floor, turn to the outside edge of your right foot, Push into the toes of your left foot. We find our full kind of Kokoraska type variation thing here. Here, can we keep this left hand off the floor? Maybe we do need to put it down, but perhaps we can try to not pick that left foot up. And it's going to try to keep sucking in towards our belly. Maybe we can bring that left hand back, stepping your left foot towards the front. Sweep your arms up over your head. Maybe just shorten your stance a little bit. Allow us to try to find some actual hip extension there. And then we're going to bring those arms down, back behind us. Lean our belly out on towards our thighs. So from here, we're going to just lean forward enough that the back foot can lift. We're now in this balanced pose here with left knee bent. Should begin to feel like glutes, hamstrings, quads, whole lot is firing. 
Now pull that right knee in towards our chest, stand tall, arms lift, right leg goes long. We're now in this pose, I guess, Utita Hasta Parashtasana. And then from there, we're gonna sweep ourselves back into straight legged Tekasana or Virabhadrasana three. Your choice, step the right foot back, open it up, find your warrior two. As we find warrior two, head, heart and hips all in line. Sink the hips down. Can you think about trying to straighten this back leg? And when you straighten it, it should feel as if it almost rolls outwards a little bit. Left arm to the front leg, right arm up overhead. Hello, Douglas. Yes, I know. And then sweep that arm down. Find your Prasarita Padottanasana again, your wide leg forward fold. And again, it's perfect opportunity to not worry about the depth of the pose of straight legs and to just explore your awareness of your hips in space. Where feels tight, where feels loose. You'll notice potentially that as you shift left and right, the abductors, the insides of your legs begin to feel uh, tighter on one side than the other potentially. That's a good example of maybe where your kind of mass tends to sit and how your body's trying to manage that. Inhale, we'll rise to our flat back. Exhale, sink down, turn that left foot back to face towards the front. Draw the arms back up, sink your hips down. Cartwheel those hands back down towards the floor. We'll pick that left foot back up towards the sky. Open that hip one last time and then step it back down towards the floor, drop to your knees, sink your hips down. Hands behind the back, variation of camel. So we're not gonna to go to full camel because I don't really like it, but there you go. So from here, fingertips on the floor, squeeze bum cheeks on, lift the hips up, short blades together, exhale, come down. And again, inhale, lifting, pushing, squeezing. Exhale, come down, final time. Coming back, inhale, pushing, lifting, squeezing. And then maybe we can just lift all the way back tall. From here, we're gonna draw the right knee in towards our right wrist, lie down onto the outside of the right leg. Right shin parallel with the front, left shin parallel with the side, stag pose. 90-90 type leg shape. We're going to fold forward over our legs and breathe here just for a case of five. Four. Again, if this is too much, you could turn your chest so you're actually resting your belly on your thigh. That might be easier. Three. Two. Dougie. And one, slowly lift your way up. Sweep your left leg around, place it in front of your right. Sweep your right leg out and place it down beside you on the right. And now we just switch the side. You can't see because we've got a massive great vein in the way, but we're now 90-90s uh, on the other side. Fold forward over your legs. And again, we breathe. This is the opportunity just to breathe in for four, breathe out for six, or whatever your breath rate was at the beginning, maybe six and eight, maybe three and five. Just for now, see if you can extend your exhale, but through your nostrils as softly and quietly as you can. And then we'll slowly begin to lift our way back up. From here, sweep that right leg out in front, the left leg out in front. We're gonna come down to relax now. We'll just finish off by trying to gently, slowly kind of articulate our spine down. So put your hands on the fronts of your knees 
And then hopefully, I want you to try and keep your chest or your collarbones in about the same position, but you're gonna to try to roll down off the bony bits of your bum on towards the fleshy bits. Keep going, you can have your hands behind your knees or on your knees to slow it down more. The chin stays forward to kind of keep the weight a little bit forward. You roll, you roll, you roll, you roll, you roll, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself on your back. Give the knees a big hug and a squeeze. If you want to, you can find that happy baby for a moment and just roll around. If you've ever practiced with me, you know I pretty much love this pose. And we could just tap and roll and whatever else, but just trying to load the neck up. This is just a finishing off thing. And then let those legs go long out in front, the palms facing up, your breath on the back of the nose. Can you just kind of shuffle your shoulder blades down away from your ears. Maybe just put your fingers under the box, put that little lumpy bit at the back of your neck, your head, and then find yourself relaxing here. So just letting go of your practice, letting go of any of that, whether it was easy or hard or complicated or you got lost. As always, the asana is just a, a chance to explore your body, to feel into where you are today, things which work, things which don't, none of it's important. What's important is you understanding your edge at this particular day and time and not letting your ego get in the way and just stick into that mini bent arm kind of chaturanga push-up thing where you're on your knees and you only bend them two or three mil. It's difficult to do that in a class when everyone else around you looks like they're you know, doing a full push-up. It's really, really not important. It's far more important to stick to what your body wants to do and is capable of doing. Just two more breaths. Breathing into the lungs, still through the nose, still soft, still slow, still quiet, but still deep. And then finding your morning yawning, pandiculating, stretching things. Just imagine you've woken up and you're just stretching your whole body out. Draw your knees up into your chest, give them a big hug, and just roll your way up, keeping your eyes closed for the final few moments. Sitting nice and tall. As we just find ourselves Draw through the spine, shoulder blades relaxing, palms just wherever it feels most comfortable. Finding the hands, rising up to prayer as we fold forward, down and over the legs. The cast on the stuff, never bound to. May all beings be happy and free. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste, thank you for joining me. Thanks guys, I have no idea if any of you watched that. <coughs> I saw there's a few people watching and whatever else, but um, yeah, you should be able to go back and watch this at any time, I have no idea how long it was, probably 35, 40 minutes in the end. Um, so yeah, any thoughts, any whatever else, uh, leave me a comment, Doug is back. Um, and yeah, if you've got any ideas of things you want, then again, hit me up and I shall go with it. Nice one, all right mate, guys, um, have a good day, speak to you soon, cheers.